Hello everyone, welcome from the Vicarage to our first Doing Church Differently broadcast. Today is Saturday the 21st of March. As you're aware, we can't meet for public worship at the moment, but that doesn't stop us being church. We're just going to have to do things differently, finding different ways to worship and pray, different ways to connect and care for each other, different ways to serve our community. Some of those things will be as simple as picking up the phone to people regularly. Some will require us to get some technology in place. But key to them all will be good communication. Communication with God in prayer and communication with those we know. By early next week, we hope to have a new website up and running specifically designed to share resources to help us through this time. We're also looking for solutions that work for people who don't have access to computers or email accounts. That could include being able to dial a phone number to hear a message. We're really grateful to those in the fellowship who are doing the hard work on those things. It's all moving very quickly, so there'll be lots to announce in coming days. Please keep checking this website for updates and do share news with people in the church family who you suspect don't have access to computers. This coming Sunday, the 22nd of March, the Archbishops have called for a National Day of Prayer. Our nation has a history of that. You may know that it was in the days after a National Day of Prayer in 1940 that Hitler strangely switched his tactics from bombing RAF airfields to bombing other targets, a decision widely credited as being the decisive turning point in the Battle of Britain. Please do join in this Sunday. There are a number of ways you can do it. Firstly, the Archbishops are leading a service which will be broadcast on BBC Radio 4 at 10 past 8 on Sunday morning and widely released online after 9am. You can tune into that. Secondly, download the prayer sheet from the front page of the website. It's in the same place that you usually get the bulletin. Thirdly, if you're well and not in the vulnerable group, Come and spend some time in church between 10 a.m. and midday or 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. We'll be keeping to social distancing guidelines. There will be a rolling PowerPoint with ideas for prayer and Mothering Sunday flowers to pick up. That prayer PowerPoint will also go onto the website so that you can use it later. And finally, the Archbishops have encouraged us to put candles in our windows at 7pm. Perhaps use that as a time to either pray as a family or phone a friend and pray with them. The Sunday after, the 29th of March, we have our service of repentance and healing. So much has gone into preparing for that, including the 40-day fast and the prayer work you've been doing individually over Lent. So, we're going to carry on with it but just do it at home. On Monday, we'll be posting out to you a service booklet specially designed to be used at home. And we want to encourage you to take part at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, the 29th of March, so that we can all do it together, but at home. The booklet will work on its own, but we'll also be putting a video up on the website to lead you through the service. It will be a video, not just a live stream, so that you can easily pause it depending on how quickly you want to go through the prayers. But it will only be up for a few hours, around 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. After that, the line is drawn and we move forward. Lots more things will appear in coming days and weeks, including the possibility of live streaming Sunday services. So keep checking back to the website. Finding different ways to care for each other is important too. Key to that will be our existing small groups and the good old telephone. Please do call each other regularly and get used to praying with and for each other over the phone. I will be giving a lot of my time to phoning around the church's membership list. Serving our community will have to be done differently too, with things like coffee break and pit stop unable to meet. Christians have always been in the forefront of serving our communities at such times of crisis. As I'm sure you're already doing, we encourage you to drop notes through the doors of vulnerable neighbours with your phone number 
offering help if they need it. There may also be some members of the church family who are struggling to do simple shopping. Anna Nesh is collecting a list of people who are in the non-vulnerable group and will be prepared to help with that. Do pass your name to her if you can. We will call on you if we find people who need help. We're talking to local councillors and others to see how we can be part of the wider community effort as well. 2000 years ago, St Paul wrote to the church in Rome at a time when they were going through great hardships. He wrote either soon after Emperor Claudius had expelled all the Christians from Rome or shortly after Nero succeeded Claudius. And you no doubt know of the great persecution Nero imposed upon the church. So they were in a rough time. At the end of that letter, chapter 15, verse 13, Paul wrote these words. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Eugene Peterson translated them even more exuberantly. Oh, may the God of hope fill you up with joy, fill you up with peace, so that your believing lives filled with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit will brim over with hope. We believe that this verse is very pertinent to our situation now. Note that hope is not something that Paul expects us to drum up ourselves. He says God is hope. It's his very nature. And it's by the power of his Holy Spirit that we too can be filled with hope. The effect of that is that we will be filled with joy, filled with peace. Not because of our circumstances, which may be pretty difficult, but because the news of Jesus Christ, that God loves us, that he is for us, that he sacrificed himself so that we may be welcomed into God's family. That news is so intrinsically good and amazing that it cannot help to bring a smile to our faces and hope to our hearts. But it doesn't end there. Paul writes that we will overflow with hope. The word translated overflow is a big, generous word in Greek. It means superabundance, more than enough to share. And that is going to matter so much in the months ahead. Our supermarkets' empty shelves tell us so much about selfishness and greed and fear. My nephew saw a man the other day with a trolley full of pasta refusing to give just one packet to an old lady who was pleading with him. Fortunately, my nephew is a big chap and he just took one and gave it to her. But while many in the world are behaving selfishly, let our hope cause us to be different. Let our overflow of hope cause us to look after those around us. Simply picking up the phone regularly, checking people are okay, Praying with them on the phone will mean so much to so many. We know these are difficult times, but we honestly feel quite excited about what might happen amongst our church community through these months. By the time we can meet together again, we will undoubtedly be a different type of community. But if we listen to what the Holy Spirit is prompting us to do, we believe that we could by then be much better equipped to fill our mission in this area than we are now. So we encourage you to use this time to grow, grow closer to God, closer to other members of the church and closer to your friends and neighbours. And so may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. You may have noticed we're not used to doing things this way. We hope it's been helpful to you and maybe also given you a bit of a laugh. We'll, we'll be, be in, in touch, touch again, again soon with, with our, our love. love. Bye, Bye for, for now. now.